Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about bringing to life all photographs with Mohawk and presented by Benjamin Mitchley. Some general information is that this webinar will be recorded and will be sent via email to all racers and attendees and also uploaded to our YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications once the video is available to watch. Uh, there will be a Q&A on the last 15 minutes, so please send your questions through the question panel. Um, panelists are Mari Quinones, Victor Paredes, and Benjamin Mitchley. Please uh, don't forget to interact uh, through your Instagram story in this webinar, adding us as hashtag webinar at Moho Animation at Benjamin Mitchley. Before we continue, I will share with you Benjamin's uh, biography. Benjamin is a full-time South African artist, scenic artist, illustrator to digital animator and augmented reality artist. He consults and presents workshops on 2D animation and art vibe augmented reality. Benjamin does commissions and collaborate with artists by animating their artworks for the art vibe so with that, I will leave you with Benjamin and his presentation, bringing to life all photographs with Moho. Thank you so much. Hi, um, uh, thank you, Maria. Um, I'm gonna jump straight in. Straight in. Uh, hi to everybody. Um, I'm going to attempt to uh, complete an old photograph uh, that's going to look something similar to this. Um, I'm just going to jump straight in. So basically, this is the uh, original photograph um, and uh, I created. So basically, my animation style is a cutout style. Um, I cut out all the moving parts usually, uh, but for old photographs, I try and use the mesh warp in Moho most, but I, I like to separate a few layers. So basically what I did here, um, I'm going to just activate all the layers that I've cut out and I'm going to hide the main layer. So I... So basically, I cut out the the figure and I fill in the background. So all the areas that I've cut out for this um, animation, uh, let me just zoom in here so you can actually see. So I've created a blink. Um, there's some reflections of the eyes. I created. Uh, the eyes as well, so that we can have some movement in the eyes. Um, let me just put that back. I'm going to close that. So there we go. She's a bit spooky here. So we've got uh, what I did was I created a mask of the eye itself so that uh, the I can mask the the eyes inside the uh, inside the mask of the eye, and let me take that away. And then, obviously, yeah, I've got the head. I've separated the head. Um, if you, as you can see here, it looks a bit weird, but with the background on, uh, the hair actually looks quite soft. So what I do is when I cut out the layers, I'm just going to show you the body. I've separated the body. I'm going to hide the head quickly. So the, only the body is cut out. And then the mouth. I added some teeth for the mouth. And what I do is when I cut out the layers, I'm going to hide the background so you can see this. I try and blur the edges, especially for old photographs. So that the cut out area doesn't look too uh, sharp. It's a bit, it works better if it's a bit faded. So basically, 
that and are all the layers. So I cut out some of the pegs as well in each uh, so that that can get some movement. And that's the basics that I did. So um, what I do next is I export uh, the artwork or the layers as a PSD layer. So export PSD and then I choose my PSD and then I export. So, and then I just drag it into Moa. So I'm gonna go straight into Moa. So all of this you can do in photo editing software. I use Affinity Photo, you can do it in Photoshop and any free photo editing software to create your layers. So I'm going to jump into Moho. So I'm just gonna close, close this animation. And I'm just, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drag what I like about Moho is if you've got a clean screen, I drag my PSD file straight into Moho. And then it obviously asks me if I, to import the layers individually. I click individually. And it automatically, I'm just going to take the black away. Uh, um, so it automatically sizes, uh, the camera size is already selected. So if I X, uh, if I enlarge the image, you can actually see the camera is already set up for the size of the image. I usually for the photo of this, I'm just gonna make it slightly bigger so that uh, no gaps will show. So what we're gonna do now is I just need to group a few of the layers. So for the eyes, I'm going to turn that into a switch layer so that she can blink. So I'm first going to select um, all the eye layers um, and then right click group with selection. And then I'm just gonna name that eyes. Try that again, eyes. And before I turn it into a switch layer, I'm going to just group uh, the reflection and the eyes as well as the eye mask. I'm gonna group that with selection. And I'm just gonna call that um, eyes open and then I've got two layers for the switch layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click convert to switch. And now you can see those eyes have disappeared over the blink. I'm just going to switch that to the open switch. And there we have the open. But now I need to mask the eyes into the mask eye mask layer so i'm going to double click on the open eye uh, properties go to masking i'm going to click hide all and apply so there we go our eye is now in the mask right so let's see um so we've got the reflection is here as well. Let me just see the reflection is there. Right, so what I'm going to do is, let's see, okay, so there we've got a group. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to uh, make a, uh, I'm gonna create a mask wall player around the head. So I first select the head layer because this will help me to make her uh, face uh, turn from left to right. I'm just gonna open up um, the animation that I did of her before. So let me just uh, go here so that you can just see what I'm talking about. All right, so basically I want her head to turn. 
So I'm going to go to the bone layer just to show you what I've done here. Um, I'm going to create a mask layer um, around the head. So here's the head. I'm just going to put the mask layer on. So basically, I want her head to turn. So I'm going to later on create a, um, what do you call, I'm just going to go on frame zero. I want her head to turn. So basically, I'm going to put control J so you can see my bone. Uh, so I want her body and her head to turn from left to right like that. So basically, it's going to be the same. So basically, I'm just going to create the mesh warp around the head first. So all I do is I select the layer, I go to um, draw on the top, and then I select create smart, bow, uh, smart warp layer. And it automatically creates the layer behind it. So what I want to do now, I'm going to hide my background so that you, so that I can just see. I'm also going to hide all the pegs so that I can see that I've got all the points are in place. So there's a few points that I would like to delete here. Um, let me just put that on. Let me delete that. And I want to delete that. All right, let's have a look. So the outside looks fairly decent. I think it's fine. I'm going to move a few points around here um, just to square the face a bit. I like to try and keep my points uh, next to each other to a degree if they are the same amount of points. I mean, as you can see, there is a lot of points around the hair, but around the face, I try and keep it uh, some some sort of symmetry so that um, when I move the points around that it is almost in um, the right position of creating a nice symmetry turn. So, okay, so I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra line for the center um, of the figure. So I'm just going to add a line. So this is the, the, the points that are going to uh, be manipulated when I make the turn. So I'm just going to zoom in here. Um, so the top lip, I'm going to add a bit of um, height and then in the middle of the mouth, on the lip, and then on the bottom of the chin, and then to the bottom of the chin. So that would be my center line. Um, I like to usually, but I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. So I'm going to put, okay, one thing that I want to mention on the top here, Make sure that your auto weld is off because sometimes uh, creating these inside lines will uh, link by accident. So always keep your auto weld off when you're creating these lines. Um, I'm going to create a, a line around the nose. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible as well. So just for time. Uh, just going to move that one there, and then I'm going to add another line for the smile lines, the, the 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 line around the mouth, and on that side as well. And let's see where else on the eyebrow. I'm going to add a line there, and a line there, and then around the eyes. I like to surround the eyes usually. Um, but uh, I'm just going to uh, create a top line of the eye, and I'm going to create the bottom line of the eye. So I'm trying to keep a point opposite each other to a degree. I'm going to do the same on the other side and on the top of the eye. All right, so I'm just going to make these lines a bit thinner 
um, just so that I can see the edge of the um, the edges of the photograph. So I would like to keep the points as close to those lines of the eye uh, to a degree. Um, let me just do that. And then also the line match up the points on the top and the bottom to a degree. Okay, let's do that. All right, so I think I'm going to add another line on the top along the edge of the face but just to there because we already got some points at the bottom and I'm going to do the same on the other side right so that's more or less what uh, I would do so the hair on the top wouldn't move as much because obviously it's full of pegs. It's pegged to the to the rope on the top. Now I want to do the same to the body. Just, okay. Now what I need to do is I need to first save my document because we don't want a power failure now and lose everything. I'm just going to save the document quickly. We save it as I'm just going to say hair dryer test hair dryer test okay and we're in edwina so this photograph is of a silent movie actress called edwina booth and there are some some fun photographs online that you can find that is public domain that you can use to play and uh, have fun right so let's go to the body i'm gonna choose the body i'm just gonna hide the head and the layer of the head uh, Let's take that the teeth and the eyes away. Right, so I'm going to do exactly the same again. So I'm going to choose the body layer. I'm going to go to above to draw, create smart warp layer. And there we go. We've got our layer there. And it looks okay. I'm going to delete a few points that I don't think are necessary. So let's just delete a few points and move them around. And we'll put that in the middle. Let's see. And just shape the. Uh, I don't always keep all the points that automatically, that is automatically generated because it's not really necessary for all the points. So these here on the arm, because it's a straight line, I usually try and just keep it simple and just move the, the, the corners of and the shape, try and keep the shape of the um of the layer so you can add points with the add points tool if you wanted to add more let's put one in the middle there and then let's see the side looks fine uh we can i think delete a few points here i'm just going to move um, let's delete that one now and move that aside Right, so I think that should be fine. I'm just going to take that, delete that point. So we've got a straight line at the bottom. That should be okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put another line in the center to make the turn. This will be much more simpler. Um, I'm going to just go to, there we've got four points. And then on the side of the arm, I'm going to create, or should I say the, the shoulder. From the shoulder, I'm going to create a few points points which I can make the arm and uh, the shoulder uh, from the, the arm part of the layer to reduce it or expand it when I make the turn. So that's more or less uh, what I, I think would work well. Let's just say let's take it from the shoulder there rather like that. Uh, let's do it something like that. Okay and that should be be enough to uh, make the body turn slightly. Right, so let's just bring back the head and the pegs and let's see what we have. So there we've got two um, um, mesh warps created. Okay, so I'm going to hide the head again and this time I'm going to add uh, mesh on the eyes itself. So um, 
because when the head turns, the eyes obviously aren't going to um, follow, sorry, the eyes aren't going to follow the, um, okay, something happened here, the closed eye for some reason moved up. Let me just see what happened here. Oh, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to create a mesh warp. Let me just turn that back to closed eye. I'm going to create another smart warp layer and automatic that's quite too big. Um, so now you can see what happened is the eyes that are closed disappeared. So what you need to do, especially because it's in a, in a switch layer, you're going to have to group it to see it as one layer. So I uh, select both layers, group with selection, and I'm going to call it uh, eyes closed. And there we have our layer back. So what I want to do with this is I want to delete a few points. Again, I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. Uh, let's just delete a few points here and then just move them around again. Right, so let me put that in place. Uh, I will add a few points. I'm going to add a few points here and down. So let's see, I'm going to move that up to the corner, match that up a bit and the shape on the side. Let me just see, we'll push that up. Let me see what I've done here. Okay, that one can go there and that one there. So there we've got our mesh warp layer. What I'm gonna do with this one as well, I'm gonna reduce the size of the the line so I can see where I am. And there we've got that is more or less okay. Um, not 100%, but it will work. All right, so then I'm going to do the same for the open eye. So what I need here is the eye mask. I'm going to create. Um, a smart warp layer for the mask. And then what I'm going to do is I want, I don't want the mask to be masked. So I'm going to remove the mask from that. So I'm just going to say, don't mask this layer, apply. And there we can see the line. I'm going to reduce the width of the line. And then let's see, move a few points around here, maybe move. Uh, delete some let me see so we've got um let me hide let me just see where we are okay so the mask is more or less there um i'm going to delete a few points here as well and just move that around And do the same to the other eye. Let's just see if that. Oops. All right. More or less okay. All right. Let's do the same to the other eye. Okay. So we have, for some reason, something's happened to the other eye mask. Okay, I made an error, so it's the mask that I have to mask. So there we go, the mask layer is, for some reason is showing, let me just hide that. Okay, there we go. Move that around. Just gonna hide the eye here because for some reason the mask is not showing up well. Let me hide the head, see what's going on there. There we go, now I can see the mask better. Okay. All 
right, so I just keep that simple and just do that. All right, so let's put the head back. Let's see if that's done. Okay, so now what we need to do is um, I'm going to push switch off that so we can just see we can actually. All right, I'm going to turn the head back on. Right, so I'm going to convert the character into a bone layer. So what I need to do is I'm going to select all the body parts and I'm going to group the body parts. So it's the eyes, the head, the teeth, the body and the rope. So I'm going to select the layers, group with selection and just call that hairdryer. All right, so, and then right click on the layer and convert to bone. And then I'm gonna add some bones, All right? So add bone tool, ah, add bone tool. So I'm going to, this time I'm gonna go a bit backwards because I want this, uh, let me take that away. I want these guys to go up and down. So the parent bone is gonna be back to front here. So what I'll do is I add the parent bone from the top and I'm gonna stop just before the rope. And now I'm going to go on the rope, stop above the peg, go one up for the peg. Then I'm going to alt select the previous bone, which is part of the rope drag it so that the, the next bone becomes the, the child of that bone. Drag up for the peg, oops, and then alt click the previous bone, drag on the rope to the next peg and drag one bone up for the peg, alt click on the previous bone and we'll make one, two, say three bones for the rope, the rope on the side. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Oops, so I'm going to select the parent bone, alt click and then drag, this one's a bit shorter, and then one up for the peg, alt click previous bone to the next bone and peg, alt click, drag, peg, alt click to the pre previous bone, drag, and drag one up and alt click previous bone let's say one two let's just make two bones there all right so then i'm going to select the main parent bone again i'm going to just go one bone down for to the uh the the hair so imagine where the skull ends it's more or less there so i'm going to more to put in the bone there. The next bone is gonna be the head bone. So I'm going to end it where you imagine the neck would join the head. So I'm just gonna guess around about the nose. Then I'm gonna drag a bone for the neck and then a bone all the way down for the body. So for the body bone, I'm going to add a shoulder bone and to the side and then drag down for the arm alt click the body bone and make another shoulder bone and a bone down to the arm all right so uh, that's more or less the uh the bones that i'm going to use so now i've got to bind the bones to the layers so what i'm going to do now is um i'm going to select the hair bone let me just sort up here so i'm just going to select the head all right so we want the head to be attached so i'm going to select all the bones that are linked to the head layer and mesh so it's those bones plus uh that's 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 it and let me just see what i've done here yes so 
now you want to flexi bind so go to bone layer and then use selected bones for flexi binding uh, control shift f then um, bind the head all right so i'm gonna go up to the pegs so all right so what i've basically done here i did not choose all the bones yet so i need to choose the let me just check where I am now. Um, I'm going to select these bones for the head as well because they're part of the rope. So I'm going to have to bind those to the head as well. So I'm just going to say control. Where we go, we're going to bone, control shift F, and there if we bind the head, let's bind the body. I'm going to select the neck bone, the body bone, shoulder, arms, arms, and we choose the body and control shift F and we bind the bones to the body. All right, let's do the pegs. Um, I'm going to choose first the rope again. So I'm going to select all of the rope bones first. and I'm gonna bind them to the rope. So we got the rope here, choose the rope layer and control shift F, and that would be the rope layer at the back. All right, then the pegs, I'm just going to use the um, layer selector to choose the peg. And there we go, we got the peg, control shift F, Okay, sorry, first got to, all right, so what a mistake I made. I did not drag the pegs, I did not choose the pegs in the bone layer. So I'm just gonna drag them into the bone layer quickly and there they'll work now. All right, so peg one, control, shift F. All right, peg two, choose the bone, control, shift F. Peg three, control shift F. Peg four, control shift F. Peg five, control shift F. Six, control shift F. Seven, control shift F. Right, so they should be bound now to the body let me let's test uh, i'm just going to put the background on so we can actually see what a bit what's going on here all right so what i first need to do is i'm going to bind the bones to the wall players as well the the um so i'm just first going to go through the warp layers so the body I'm going to attach to the bones as well. So let me just select the bones. Uh, select all the body bones and control shift F for the warp layer. And then go to the head. I'm going to do the same. Control shift F to see it. now the eyes I need to connect to the head bone. So I'm just gonna choose the head bone. Control shift F for the eyes. Eyes closed, control shift F. Um, eye mask, control shift F. Same head bone for all the eyes, um, eye layers. The eyes and the reflection layer also bound to the head bone. Let's see, there's a mouth teeth. Okay, we've got teeth I need to select to the head bone as well. So control shift F and let's just see if it's all done. So just to check to see that we're connected to all the bones, let's do a test. We can manipulate 
click that manipulate bones uh, tool. And okay, you can see there's quite a lot of bone strength here. So I'm just going to bring the bone strength down. I'm going to select all the bones, just drag it to more or less you know, like that. So you can actually see what we're doing. Go back to the manipulate bones tool. And let's just see if everything's connected. So we've got the pegs, uh, pegs connected, and we've got, uh, let me just see all of this. We've got hairs connected, um, the head, um, body, that's the neck, body, arms. All right, so we basically connected. All right, so one thing I forgot to do is to add a um, target bone for the washing line. So what I'm going to do is, okay, make sure I haven't selected any bones, create a an extra bone for this uh, end of washing line. I'm going to put the target right on the end here. Let me just put my background black on so you can see where I'm putting it. I'm going to put the target right there. And I'm going to name it target one, target one, and let me just get blocked it. All right. And then I'm going to select the bone that I want to attach to the target, go into the bone constraints, and choose target one right so it's now connected so i need to get another target for this side of the rope i'm going to add another bone make sure you no bones are connected uh, selected uh, choose the add bone tool drag another target bone down just call it target two target two and uh, let's just do that again. Sorry, target two. All right, and then I'm going to select the rope bone at the end, and I'm going to go to the bone constraint settings, and I'm going to go to target. Click on the arrow, go down, and choose target two, and immediately you'll see it's connected. Close. So now to test that, I'm going to, there we go, our rope is working. All right, so you actually want the target to be on this side so that the head turns, so that the hair bends a bit. So as you can see here, uh, we want the inside of the Hair to turn, so the target needs to change. Um, the, uh, the bones that the, the the bone connected to the target needs to change. So if we just show all the bones here, so you can see we've got two targets, and they are linked to the inner. The second inner bone is connected to target two, and the uh, second bone on the right is connected to the target. So I'm going to just go remove this target again from the side bones and select the second bone and choose target one and go to the second bone here and choose target two. And now we can test it and see if there we go the bend is much better so the hair looks like it's bending with the rope all right so that's basically it for the bones right time wise uh mario uh do we still have a bit of time for me to do the smart bone uh turn yes definitely all right, fantastic. All right, let me create a smart bone to make the head turn. So I'm just going to add a bone to the side. Okay, let's first make sure none is selected. And I'm going to add a bone to the side here. And I'm going to call it, uh, I'm just going to call it turn. 
All right. Oh, cat plugs always go off. Turn. All right. So now all I do is I've named the bone. Now I'm going to go to the bone uh, tab on the top and I'm going to say make smart bone dial. But for this one, I'm not going to separate the bone. So I'm just going to uncheck the separate actions from uh, positive to negative angle. So that will just make one uh, line. So let me just click OK. And I'm going to drag the timeline up so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So basically, you can see the bone moves from left to right there. So what I'm going to do is I want the head now uh, to turn to the right. So this is the fun part of it. Um, uh, if you want, if you think it's fun. So um, let's see the head. So we choose the head wall player. So what I usually do is I go to frame 50, which is more or less the center of the bone when it's straight up. Uh, and I usually uh, select all my points and I usually click on the um, the magnet uh, tool and then I select I click the selected points only I check that and then all I do is okay I'm just going to increase the size of the points and all I do is I'm just going to click on the point so it makes keyframes on frame 50 so now we want to see we're going to turn towards the right so I drag it to frame one which turns to right so what I'm going to do now, this is where I don't use the magnet tool. So I deselect the points and I only select the points that I want to first move because otherwise things are going to go uh, out of hand. So I'm just going to select the face, the inner face, uh, the mouth, the nose, the eyes to move right. And then I'm going to play with it. But then I use the transform tool. You can use the magnet tool, but I prefer to use, uh, I use both. So just to get it a quick movement first, I drag it to the right and we click the shift. So it's holding, let me just undo that. Holding shift and drag right, then it doesn't go out of place. And then I squash it slightly just to keep it in, uh, in position a bit and squash it to the right a bit. So we want our nose to move towards the right more. So then I start shaping. Okay, I'm going to hide that teeth layer because that's going to look a bit strange. So, and then I'm also going to hide the eye layer. Let's hide the eye layer so we can see what we're doing here. All right, so I'm going to use the magnet tool and then select points. I'm just going to reduce the size of the magnet tool a bit more. Now, here is where I drag my points into place. So the face, uh, so my center line, my nose, obviously, is going to move towards the side. So I drag the point. I keep my middle point of the, just above the lip. I drag the lip a bit forward just to give it a bit of shape, uh, you know, just to give it some sort of 3D effect, if you can call it that make this side a bit bigger. So imagine the face is turning and it's getting smaller towards the right and a little bit bigger towards the left. So I'll make this eye slightly bigger and I'll squash that eye a bit. I'll bring in, okay, let's first squash it a bit before I bring it in. To make it slightly smaller, this would be a little bit bigger just to get you a little bit of a feel that the face has moved towards the right. So I'll give the the nose a bit of a point and the chin also can go a bit forward and in all right so if you want to check what we've done there uh, just drag it on the timeline and see if it works so the face sort of works there so I want the head now this is where I want to manipulate the head so the mouth can maybe move in a bit here and that bit out. Let's just see, bring that down. Oops, I didn't go to frame one, just drag the points back. 
uh, her nose is lifting a bit, we can drop her nose a bit, but it's not important. I mean, we can fix that. You can do all the little finicky bits after you've put it into place, spend some time on it, uh, just do the basics and then move on to uh, the details a bit later because you have time to do it. I mean, take your time. You can, um, again, I'm not on frame one, drag the points there. Let's see. So that's more or less. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the face part. I'm just going to select all. It might be easier. And then I want to drag this face in a bit uh, so that it looks like it's, uh, so that the face seems like it is turning. So obviously you see less when the face turns and you see more on this side. So I'll drag this out a bit. Uh, And there we got a bit of a better motion. So what I'm going to just zoom out a bit. I'm going to increase the size of my magnet and magnet tool. And I'm just going to make this a bit wider and push in the hair on this side. And that should give a better effect of the turn. Again, I'm not on frame one. Drag those points back to frame one. And there we get a bit of a better turn. And that's one side. So let's go to frame 100. And we do, we're now going to do the left turn. I'm going to select the inner face again and transform tool. I'm going to squash it a bit that way, drag it that way. And then I'm going to use the magnet tool and just reduce the size again. And change the size of the eye. Make that a bit bigger. Okay, now I um, move the nose, shape the nose, uh, make that a bit smaller. Okay, put the lip out, give it a bit of a 3D effect, the nose, squash it a bit, let it go out here. That could go in and push that out a bit to make the mouth a bit bigger on that side and on the chin as well. And then just drag that forward a bit. So okay, that's more or less rough. Okay, so we've got a bit of a turn there and I'm just gonna drag that back a bit. And then we can do the same to the face. Okay, she's a bit wonky, but it gives you an idea of what's happening there. And I'm just going to select all Take the magnet tool and I'm going to just make the side oops, too much um, of the face. Bring the face a bit in and bring it out on this side. Make that bigger. Increase the size of my magnet tool and just bring that out a bit. Oops, that was a necessary. Let's just do that. And then we'll push in the hair a bit here. And we've got a bit of a hair turner, but her nose is a bit weird there. So we'll just move the nose a bit. Uh, I'm going to move that up. and go to frame 100 and push that up and bring the nose a bit back. Okay, that's a bit of a speedy. She's not perfect. Her eye is a bit wonky there. And I'll just move her eye a bit back there. So just spend some time, make it perfect. This isn't perfect, but just to give you an idea, this is how it's done. It's actually quite simple. Right, so I'm going to leave it at that. Oh, okay, I can't leave it at that. I have to now organize the eyes. So all you need to do is you're going to do exactly the same thing with the eyes. I'm going to hide the head uh, uh, warp layer. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the closed eye layer. So when the head turns, the closed, okay, so we're on frame 50. I'm going to select all. Uh, make a point and then go to the left. So you'll see we're going to have to move the eye. So the quickest way to do this 
is I'm going to choose the full eye layer. And then I'm going to choose the uh, transform layer tool. And then as the head turns, I'm first going to just click on there so it creates a, a, a keyframe. And then I'm going to go to frame one. And then I'm just going to shift left drag to the right. And I'm going to squash it a bit, drag it back to the left. That's the quickest way to, to move the whole eye layer. So I'm going to go to frame 100 and do the same on the other side. And just squash it in there a bit. And all right, so this is where you can use, um, this is where you're going to use your uh, mesh warp layer. All right, so closed eye. All right, so we've already created points on that side. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the size of the eye to match the image below. So we, so that it hides that open spooky face without the eye. All right, so the eye is a bit smaller on the side. So what I'll do is I'll push that that way just to give the shape of the eye. Okay, let's move it more there. So if you can see there's the bottom of the eye, we're just going to cover it uh, and just make sure it's in place. Make this a little bit bigger. Um, so we've got a, a shape there. So what we need to do here is, okay, so you can see my, um, I'm just going to, Go back to the eye layer. I'm just going to copy my zero frames to make sure it's in place. Yep, there. All right, so that's what's much better. All right, so we're going to go to frame 100. We've done that. Frame zero, uh, not zero, frame one. Uh, we're going to adjust the size of the blink to match the image below. And I'm going to reduce the size of the eye. You can see it's much smaller there. So I'm just going to bring that over a bit. And match it up to the image below, more or less. Okay, spend some time and then you'll get an idea of the eye going smaller and bigger. Let me do that. Now we're going to do the same to the the mask okay all right so we've got a bit of a funny squash on the head um it's that there all right we'll just drag that back into place go to frame one drag that back into place because that lost bit oh that's the eyebrow okay all right so more or less okay Okay, she's got a raising eyebrow. Okay, just keep it that funny. All right, let's go to the, we're going to just change the eye. I'm going to select the open mask. Okay, the mask layer is going to do exactly the same, frame 50. All right, so I'm going to make keyframes at frame 50, go to frame 1. And then just match up the mask to the bottom of the face. I'm just going to hide the eye. And let's see, we just see where that is there. Let's go closer so we can see the edge. So if you drag that, you can see there's the edge of the eye. Put the mask on the edge. And just put it into place. All right. So. That's more or less right. Let's see the corner. There we go. Um, and then you do the same on the other side. You drag that into place just to match the image below so that the eye fits properly. Okay, that's more or less. And we go to frame 100. Okay, that looks okay. I go to frame 100, sort of okay. And then do the same again. Drag the mask into place. All 
and that should be it. Let's just have a look how that looks like. Uh, that's more or less. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So we've done the eyes. Go back to the main line. And now you can test the turn. Okay, that was the turn for the head. So I'm going to do a quick body turn as well. So we're going back to the turn layer. Um, I'm just going to first make sure I'm on the bone layer. Double click on the turn layer to edit. And I want the body to turn a bit. So I'm just going to do a little bit of the body turn. Go to the body uh, warp layer. Uh, control select all the points and I'm just going to do a big mask movement here so go to frame 50 make points go to frame one we're going to turn right so I'm just going to turn the body a little bit and the shoulder can go back and down and bring in the arm to make it feel like the body is actually turning towards the right and more of the arm is showing. I'm going to raise the shoulder bit and drop the shoulder bit there. Let's see if that looks, you know, that sort of sort of works. Go to frame 100 and do the same on the other side. So I'm just going to pull the center line towards the side, drag the arm layer bit out, bring the collar back a bit, bring the shoulder down, bring in the arm, bring out the arm on this side, make it a little bit wider, raise the shoulder, bring out the collar of it, raise the shoulder, drop the shoulder there. Let's see if that did anything. No, it looks all right. It looks like she's got a bit of a turn going there. And that's more or less it. So we can just we can move the collar back here, move the collar out here. And there we've got a body turn. All right, so go back to mainline. And that's about it. So, okay, one thing I did forget was the teeth. And obviously, Benjamin? yes. Hello. Uh, Hello. Sorry to interrupt you um, because we are running out of time. We're wondering if you can show us uh, the final rig and explain us a little bit your decisions for this. Uh, for the actions or bones that you made? Yes, no, definitely. Thank you, Maria. Um, right, so what I did, uh, what I was mentioning about the teeth, you need to move them like you move the eyes. So when you do the, the turn, let me just turn there. So uh, where's the turn? There we go. You see the teeth move along. Let me zoom in to the mouth so you can actually see the turn let me drag that a bit left there so the mouth the teeth actually move with so i actually oops now you see when you make sure you're not on frame zero make sure you are on frame zero before you start making movements okay all right so what we're going to do is yeah i'm going to go to the manipulate bone tool let's try that again all right i'm going to switch off this effect i created um, I created an old film effect with, with particles and it's just straight lines and dots and that's done with particles. Uh, very simple to give you that old movie effect. Coming back to the turn, I'm just going to go back to frame zero. Um, you'll see the, 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 the teeth layer have got a... Uh, a warp as well. So if I hide the head, you can see it. So there's the teeth layer. Let me hide the effects, old movie effects. So that also helps adding that into the turn. Um, basically, this is supposed to, uh, I, I try to keep it fun, you know, it's you just make a fun thing to do and it's the easiest um, way to go about it. Uh, let me just see where's head. She's gone. Okay. So basically, blinking again, it's a very simple process. You can add a smart bone layer and uh, go back to frame zero. Um, you're going to create smart bone layer for mouths to open and close. So her mouth opens and closes a bit. Uh, 
try to make it, I basically try to make it as real as possible. Um, see the mouth does open and close a bit. Let me just get rid of this uh, effect so I can see it better. I'm going to close that. So you can see the mouth closes and opens a bit. Um, and then we've got the head turn is basically the basic head turn. I, I, I did a, spent a bit more time on the shoulders and the squashing to give it a bit more realism. Um, and basically the eyes can move up and down, uh, side to side. And just to give you the basic movements to give, make it a fun animation, you know, it's like, uh, it's all about playing for me. I enjoy doing things like this and uh, make it as real as possible. And with photos, photographs, there's so much you can do. Um, coming back to the effect, you want an old movie effect. Uh, and it looks like the real thing, you know, and it's just done from a photograph. Uh, Mario? Yes. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Benjamin. So there's anything else that you would like me to uh, mention? Well, no, first of all, thank you so much for this presentation. We know time flies and yes. and we appreciate uh, your time and also everyone who joined us today. We asked uh, to the audience from where were you watching? Uh, so for example, D was David from UK, uh, Michaela from Ohio, Rini from Arizona, USA, Sego from Japan, Andy from Spain, Martin from Chesterfield, England, Jerry from Argentina, Ciudad Cardin. So thank you, Marcos also from Texas, Carolina from Chile. So thank you all. And actually, this is a very interesting question from Carol, Carol Ice Jacobs. Uh, amazing. Thanks, Benjamin. How long does it usually take you to prepare the Photoshop files and then how long to complete the animation? So um, it just depends on the detail. You know, if you're going to create a lot of layers, um, it's can, obviously going to take much longer. Um, just to give you an idea of um, uh, what you can create, um, I'm just going to bring up uh, a video of a project I was working on um, um, called. Uh, it was for a historic photograph. Um, there are hundreds of layers in this image. Okay, I'm just going to bring it up here. I'm just going to stop it and pause it and drag it slightly. So this was, uh, can you see the video? Sorry. Yes, we can see it. Okay, fantastic. So all of these characters, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty. There's about fifteen to twenty characters here. There's characters walking out, there's characters coming out of the bank and whatever. So each one, like I mentioned, I prefer using a cutout style. So usually if I need a specific thing to move, I'll cut it out. I can create a a, a rig without cutting any layers, then just using mesh walls. So the thing is, time-wise, you saw uh, this animation probably took me uh, about an hour and a half to two hours. The cutting process isn't that long, actually, for the Moho layers. Um, all of these are basic they basic layers for because if you're going to use mesh warp uh, mesh warp layers you don't really need a lot of layers only if you want them to move in a specific way so for example here i just cut out the mouth because i wanted the teeth to be be able to move more better but you don't need actually need to cut that out you can animate it without cutting that so yeah it just depends on the quantity and the detail you want to create so cutting of layers took me less time than animating for this particular uh, animation mm -hmm. another question is how do you decide how many points you need to add to a mesh 
Well, again, it's linked to the the quality of your. Uh, so this was also quite a very quick uh, rig. It depends on the quality of the the shape you want to create. So preferably, I keep. Uh, let me go to the face, uh, the head. So basically, when you look at the head, yeah. I still reduce the points quite a bit because the more points you have, the more difficult it can become to start animating. But if you got the time to do that, you can see there are quite a few points here. If you really want to create a nice shape, you can actually go and um, you can go and move these individual points slowly and surely. So it'll take you a longer time to create, but it will actually give you a better shape. Um, I find that not uh, putting too many points would make it simpler to use. Otherwise, it becomes a big job. You know, you're going to have to move each point if you want a specific movement. Like the mouth, you can actually add more points to the mouth. Uh, like, yeah, I'm adding a few more. It'll just shape the area better. And when you manipulate that to change the direction, um, it's just going to give you a cleaner shape but it's going to take much longer because you're going to have to move all the points around so the best is for a simple uh, mesh warp for a quick movement uh, i'm just going to undo the, that quickly uh, for a quick uh, um, turnaround you know it's like um, that's still the shape of that still looks okay uh, what i've done with this animation i've added a bit of a noise uh, uh keyframe because old movies have a bit of a shake so it doesn't really show the detail it sort of hides those little sharp points but you don't see the sharp points it looks curved enough so the simpler the better the quicker you're going to get a result mario yes Thank you. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, another question is, can you apply the same mesh to more than one layer? Yes. Um, what I've done, uh, let me just think now what I've I actually did to this. I added um, the, let's just have a look. Uh, you can, for example, you can add the eyes to the same mesh but then you need to add the points. Let me just bring that up. Uh, bring the eyes points into the head mesh. And then all you need to do is just double click. For example, I'm gonna double click on the eye, go to the, uh, uh, the image tab. And then at the bottom, yeah, you can select the, the like for example, the, uh, wherever that eye has a mesh attached you can select one of those uh, warps. Uh, if the eye was for now, yeah, you can't see the head on the eye because the head is in a different group. Ah, the eyes are in a different group, um, but it does. Oh, there's the head. Oh yeah, no, there you can. So I can select the head warp for the eyes. Sorry, I didn't see that. Um, so yes, you can more than one layer for one, more than one layer can be attached to one warp layer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And another question is, how did you change the color of the bones? They are green, yellow in your computer. Uh, you just go to edit preferences and here you get your edit colors and here you can select the colors of your bones. The object is basically your bones. And when you select, uh, uh, your selection is red. So uh, that's where you can change it. So edit preferences and then edit colors. Thank you. Uh, so, can you tell us about how did you start working uh, with Moho for this kind of projects with all photographs? All right. So, it all started with, uh, I'm going to bring up another video. I'm just going to pause that. So, it started with uh, a project called Window Wonderland, and the company, the BIA in Canada, asked me to uh, do an augmented reality animation for a mural. And it, this is the first black and white photo that I animated. I'm just going to drag it slowly because I don't think the video will play in time. So I took a whole lot of historical photographs 
And this is for the Toronto Junction in Canada, uh, and it works with uh, augmented reality. And you would see this animation when you hold the app in front of the, the mural. But this is where it all started. And these were done with multiple black and white photographs to give you uh, the story that they wanted of, of the time of the progress of history uh, in Toronto, in the Toronto Junction. That's what this animation was about. And this is where it started uh, with the photographs. And from here, um, I uh, went to the, uh, the same company, asked me to animate this historical photograph for a history uh, exhibition of old historical photographs uh, in the Toronto Junction. So this photograph is on the corner uh, of, of an area in Toronto. And again, uh, I just, uh, this, as mentioned, this process took me quite long because the original photograph, this is the how the original photograph looks like. And then everything had to be cut out and the, the masks added and the background added. But I just find it fun. It's great. Old photographs. What else can you create? I'm going to open up something else quickly here. Um, uh, uh, an actress called Dorothy, uh, 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 Dorothy, uh, sorry, Dorothy Gulliver. She, um, is also a silent movie actress and they they were dressed up in funny costumes so what fun to actually animate something like this i mean uh it's just uh it makes my creative process enjoyable that's what it's about actually doesn't matter what you're creating as long as you're enjoying what you're doing just having fun with it well thank you so much benjamin Thing and we surpassed a little bit our time, uh, but we learned a lot. We had so much fun uh, watching your projects and process. And one last bit of advice uh, to anyone who's uh, thinking about animating photographs with Moho. Well, I think the best is just to jump in. Uh, don't think about it. Uh, select something and see it in your own imagination, see the movement in your imagination and just go for it. I think the whole thing about not thinking about it too much and just doing it and see what you can create and just have fun. Well, with those wise words, thank you so <laughs> much, uh, Benjamin, for this amazing presentation. You're welcome. And thank you all who joined us, um, watching us live. I'm just going to share one last bit of information about Moho. So with Moho, the future is 2D. Moho is a powerful 2D animation software that combines the most powerful animation technology with state-of-the-art professional animation tools. Draw, rig, and animate easily. You can create your characters directly in Moho with its vector tools optimized for animation or import images or Photoshop files keeping the link and layering structure. For more information, visit mohoanimation.com. Also, as a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared via email to all the registrants and attendees, but also will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, Moho Animation. So don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications once the video is available. And follow us on our socials as Moho Animation, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, also TikTok. And for more information about Benjamin and his latest projects, follow him on Instagram as b.mitchley.art, Facebook as South African Artist, and his website bmitchley.art. So with that, thank you so much, Benjamin, for this amazing presentation. Thank you. Thank you all who joined us, and we hope to see you next time. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.